did I record my My Chemical Romance reviews besides the hot takes back to back? Yes, I did. Cobra Kai never dies. Welcome all fellow wannabes. Welcome to the channel. This is Wannabe Music Reviews. I am Gabriel Fast. I do claim to be the wannabe critic. Whether you're an, an audio listener or a video viewer slash watcher, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you know, we're, we're right in smack dab in the middle of this next series of My Chemical Romance. And uh, we're here to review the band's biggest and most popular album. And what's crazy is not only is this this band's biggest and most popular album, but this is arguably at this point one of the best albums of all time. It's just undeniably there. We're talking about influential albums. What makes an album great? It's like, oh, it's the musicianship, it's the craftsmanship, it's the production, it's the image, it's the influence, whatever. This album has all of that. It has a, a specific vision. It executes pretty much every song near near perfectly. And it had some of the biggest banger songs of all time. And instead of riding the wave and making the Black Parade 2 after the Black Parade, they killed it. They killed the idea of the Black Parade. Because whenever you have the gas in the tank to keep going, you don't want to wear it out too much. Super applaud them for that. This is kind of a long album, or is it? Let's get into it. So, The Black Parade originally released in 2006. This is just two years after their sophomore album, which was Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, which I, which I did just get done talking about, obviously, moments ago, actually. But I figured, you know, in between the hot takes, I might as well sit down and record uh, two of the band's biggest albums and uh, talk about them, you know, in true wannabe fashion, by myself, alone. The Black Parade was a movement... And, you know, it's kind of one of those things that you had this and you had like American Idiot coming out around the same time amongst like all the Fallout Boy and Panic at the Disco stuff that was coming around around that time. And it just fit in so good. You had like this really weird picture and collage of all these like different bands that made up the scene slash emo culture of the mid 2000s into, you know, the early 2010s. And My Chemical Romance was absolutely pivotal in doing that especially for people my age. So let's get into it, track by track. I find it interesting that Apple has, uh, you know, a deluxe edition of the album yet has no editor's notes on it. This is one of the biggest albums of all time. It's crazy. You have the end, which basically kind of sets the stage for this gothic slash like like Harlequin slash theatrical skeletal album that we're getting ourselves set up for. And where Three Cheers of Sweet Revenge really kind of played into the aspect of, you know, death and coming to grips with death and tragedy and anger and how love plays into all of those things. This is kind of the opposite of that in that it kind of flips three cheers for sweet revenge on its head and makes dark humor and light out of the things and almost glorifies those things in some ways and making you know kind of the idea know it's like you're never going to escape those feelings so you might as well have fun with it and make as much light of it as you can you know the first two tracks the end followed by dead with an exclamation point dead with an exclamation point No one ever had much nice to say. I think they never liked you anyway. Making death of whenever you die, you know, the majority of people aren't going to remember you, especially if you have any sort of, you know, higher up or, or, you know, if you have any sort of clout whatsoever, you know, and any sort of fame, eventually you're not, it's going to, no one's going to remember you, you know, and, and as people, we, it just, it just moves on, right? You know, it's a selfish system we live in and that's just the fact of the matter. And it makes light of that in a lot of ways, but also kind of like kind of twisting the knife a little bit while making fun of you at the same time, which is kind of funny. It's almost like the Joker wrote this song or something. <laughs> Track 
Track number three is This Is How I Disappear. Continuing with the, the theatrics and really kind of having a vibe reminiscent of what we saw in Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, it continues to set the stage. The first three or four songs really are kind of stage setters. The middle few songs are like the climax of the album and then we have a nice decrescendo as we come out of the album. So This Is How I Disappear just kind of piggybacks off of that. <laughs> Track number four being The Sharpest Lives is one of the more uh, stark tracks, I would say. A little more, not necessarily theatrical, but a little more cool sounding. A little more striking, almost like Nine Inch Nails-esque in some ways. While having a big sounding chorus, you know, all, all the same. And and having one of those songs on the album, it makes you, it makes you happy whenever that comes back around. When I was a young boy, my father took me into the city. To see a marching band. Welcome to the Black Parade is track number five. This is another song that had just skyrocketed My Chemical Romance back into fame after they had kind of not fallen out, but I'll never forget on MTV, I remember seeing the trailer for, you know, the, the trailer for My Chemical Romance. I believe they played the song live on MTV and there was a new music video out for it and all this other stuff. And it was like this huge event and it was like, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy because of the, the hype that was generating it. You know, they had gone from like the 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 emo looking boys with the long hair and now they got makeup on and, and you know, uh, Gerard Way shaved his head and he's blonde now. What's going on? And it was just, it, it, it immediately felt different. It immediately pushed the band into a place they had never gotten before. From that moment on, they have the fame, they have the clout, they're doing it. They, they've, they've achieved it. They achieved the, the, the American dream and they have been able to do what they want to with music at this very point in time from that point on forward. And Welcome to Black Parade. I mean, it's a legendary song. There's not much more you can say about it other than it's good. I mean, it's a good song. I Don't Love You is one of my personal favorites off of this. I actually sang this for my sixth grade talent show, but you know, no big deal. I think having that idea of, you know, kind of like cutting ties with a, in a toxic relationship is very present on this album. And, you know, the, the lyrics of, I don't love you like I loved you yesterday. I mean, it just goes to show when you're in a toxic relationship, man, it can change so fast, uh, your feelings for that person. And while you still might have feelings for that person, it, it the decision to break, you know, break off and like cut yourself off from that person can come very suddenly. And I, I think the ideas are definitely present there on that song. House of Wolves is one of the more like out there tracks, you know, in my opinion, I think it definitely goes into the parade aspect or, you know, kind of like having the, the, the big band sounding effects while still having a pretty dope, you know, Queen-esque rock anthem type vibe to it at the same time. It's a dope song. If you can Cancer is easily the most depressing song on the album. Uh, it's a beautiful song, but uh, it is it is very sad. And that's track eight. Mama is one of the most disturbing songs on the album, I think. Mostly just because, you know, this... We... I think we all fear of letting our mothers down, at, you know, at times. Uh, but, you know, this song just takes it one step further and it's like, look, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And um, I think what they're trying to say is it's almost impossible for me to not let you down with the things that I'm doing and the way I'm living my life. Selfish, but, you know, at least we got a good song out of it. Sleep is another striking song on this album. Um, you know, and this is really kind of as we're, we're in the downward slope at this point. From the Black Parade on to Mama, I feel like really is the climax of the album. Um, and we kind of have a downward spiral with a reprisal, of course. But then it, it just kind of, it continues to, to end on some solid notes. So Sleep is, is another kind of interlude-esque song found on this album, I think. Because, you know, it's it's much different than the rest of it. And, you know, there's, there's actually, you know, clips of people talking about, like events that happen from tragedies, you know, I believe like 9-11 and things like that. And it's, it just makes you think. And again, you know, My Chemical Romance out here making us think about our lives with various soundscapes that are found on this album. And, you know, who knew that, tele you know, that sampled telephone calls could have that effect and make you think about tragedies that have happened in the past. So another, another tragedy. There you go.
Teenagers is kind of like a, a reprisal in a way, um, you know, from the middle part of the album. And it's nice that they kind of gave us a, a, a last little upbeat, fun song, you know, as one of the singles that came out that year for the record. And it was nice they kind of gave us something to look forward to. And kind of didn't keep it so down, you know, towards the back half of the album or the last three or four songs on the album to where, you know, we kind of had something to bump to right before the last two the last two uh songs hit but you know teenagers scare the living you know what out of me uh is kind of a, a southern feel to it you know the lyrics are relatively fun there, i think there are probably certain people that may have not wanted to like the song because it sounded so different but you know the idea is still present and at the end of the day i think it's pretty punk rock in the way and what it's trying to say it was the Then we have Disenchanted, which, um, you know, is another kind of sad song. I don't really know for a fact what the song is about, but just the lyrics and just kind of talking about how how people were singing your songs back at you and like kind of how, how things seemed like they were going to be one way, but they may have ended up being a different way. Uh, I think that idea might be present here, you know, because you kind of pull the curtain back whenever you get any sort of fame. And I can't imagine what it must be like to actually see what what the entertainment industry is like and how little by little there's a really good potential for your personality to be stripped away and it's like it truly it probably truly does turn into the thing of you can have your cake but you can't eat it too so you can either eat our cake or you can have yours and just look at it um because I, I don't know i just i think about why they didn't continue the black parade idea even further after this you know after this album came out because they could have and it's just it's an interesting idea to think about them not really getting exactly what they bargained for uh, and, and it's just, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. No, I know that I can make you stay. Track 13, the last track on the album besides the, the hidden track, Blood, which is a weird song. Not really going to talk about that one. Track 13, which is Famous Last Words, kind of, you know, gives us a nice wrap up to the end of the album. Um, famous Last Words, I am not afraid to keep on living. I am not afraid to walk this world alone. Honey if, honey, if you stay, you'll be forgiven. Nothing you can say can stop me going home. Ideas of no matter what, I'm here. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and doing my thing. Even though these things that I have to deal with, whether it's, you know, a breakup or tragedy, uh, whatever it is, the ideas are still present. It's like you have to accept these things. You have to come to grips with these things. You need to realize that these things are, are inevitable. And success success you will find, failure you will probably find, making sure you have the time to spend on the most important things are, are really what's most important. And at the end of the day, if you're not doing those things and you're not you know, showing a level of integrity and you're not walking that line, then what are you doing? You know, what what... What are you doing? If you can't be honest with yourself and you can't be honest with the things that are going to, you know, life comes at you fast. And if you can't be honest and have integrity about, about what is going to happen and what decisions you're going to make, then, then what are you doing? I don't know if that's exactly what Famous Last Words is trying to say, but that's what it's always kind of meant to me. Just live your life. And it's kind of contrasting, you know, the beginning of the album. It's like, you're going to die anyway. Like you, the beginning of the album, we, you know, they're making light and they're telling the story throughout of, you know, you as a person, you should really be putting yourself in in the shoes of the, the, the messages that these songs are trying to tell, uh, you know, and it, it causes you to kind of role play a little bit, especially on songs like Cancer and Mama. You know, the things that are most important are true. They are the most truest things that you will experience in your life. And you have to do, you have to live life to the fullest. And that means something different for everybody. So that to me, the moral of the entire album is really about just living, living your, living your best life and doing what you can to be a good person. Be forgiving, be trustworthy, be humble, do your best, be an example. Life is always going to be worth living. Life is only what you make of it. So there you have it. Now, full disclosure, a lot of these ideas are things that have, you know, that's what we've talked about this before. Music is so subjective and means whether or not, you know, a certain idea was meant to be interpreted a certain way. Music is subjective. It is. It just it just is. And these songs are going to mean different things to you personally than they are going to mean to me. And, you know, this is all hearsay for me to talk about all these things. And this is just, you know, years and years and years of listening to this album. I do have a confession. This is not my favorite album by My Chemical Romance. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenges. But I still think that this album is very instrumental in music history. And if you can't appreciate it, then 
I, I don't know what's wrong with you. You don't like music. As far as the score goes for the Black Parade, I am going to go actually a 10 out of 10. I think that this this album is going to be remembered for a very, 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 very long time. And uh, I think it, it has every bit as right, as, you know, it has every bit as right as being kind of put in with, with those legendary albums that were absolutely influential, at least within the emo, punk rock, you know, alternative rock scene. It is a absolute must own and it's an absolute must listen. You got to listen to it if you've never listened to it. So there's that. There we are, another review down the pipe, and I think this is actually the last review that I'm going to be doing by myself for this series, so stay tuned. We have some cool stuff showing up. Thank you so much, guys, for, for checking out the, the, the channel and listening or watching whatever way you're consuming it. It really means the world to me, and, um, you know, I, I just, I'm really grateful for, for any time that is spent watching or listening to these things, so thank you so much. Before I go, though, I wanted to leave you with something else. Uh, so if you could stick around, I'd really appreciate it. Check it out. Hey there. So you have stumbled onto one of the many projects that we have over at Wannabe Critic Productions. This just happens to be the music project. I review music and I have ideas to do other things music related uh, on the YouTube channel and the podcast. I just have to say thank you so much for checking it out. I really, really appreciate it. But if you want to check out more stuff that we have going on over on our, you know, various projects... I encourage you to go check out some of the projects in the description down below, whether it be our YouTube channel where we post podcasts, there's going to be Let's Plays, there's reviews, there's interviews, there's all kinds of things over there, but we've kind of morphed it to be a kind of catch-all for all the different things that we do other than music. So I encourage you to go check that out. That being said, though, thank you so much for listening today or watching today. I really appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on podcast services, make sure you leave us a review. Uh, I would really appreciate it and uh, would help you know keep me relevant. So I am Gabriel Fast. I will always be the wannabe critic. <laughs>